Can a plumber make $105,000 in a year with a wrench alone? Probably. But don't you think he'd do better with other tools in his bag? My name is Kevin Fox. This is Ready for Work, and we're talking about soft skills. This is Ready for Work. My name is Kevin Fox. Ready for Work is the podcast for CT professionals, uh, students, and parents as well. It's all part of a five county collaborative that we put together on the back of uh, a CT conference, career and technical education conference uh, that involved uh, all five of these counties. I want to remind you to subscribe to this podcast. It's available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and Amazon Alexa. It's also video, as you can tell, so you will be able to consume this podcast wherever you get that type of content, Facebook, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, today I want to talk to you about um, soft skills. I started with the story of a plumber. I'm going to tell you this story is from CNBC. I want to credit the writer. Her name is Abigail Johnson Hess. You can find her on Twitter at at Abigail J. Hess, if you want to look this up. And I'll put the link to this story so you can follow along. I'll put the link to this story in the description of this podcast. Starts out like this. What does it take to, excuse me, what does it take to make $105,000 a year as a plumber in San Antonio, Texas? Gentleman's name is Richard Armendariz. He's 30 years old. He grew up in a suburb of San Antonio. Grew up with his mom and his brother and his sister. And I want to make note here, there's no father in the picture here. That'll be important later. He attended high school for only two years. Apparently dropped out. Went on to earn his GED. And then he wanted to get his associate's degree at the local San Antonio Community College. After two years, he was forced to drop out of community college because of the cost of textbooks. Matter of fact, he says right here, it was the psychology textbook. They wanted me to have the 10th edition. He bought the 9th edition, and it was about 500 bucks. He says he was 19 years old, just couldn't afford it anymore, couldn't muster up the money. He's very disappointed. He really wanted to get his associate's degree. And then, you know how that happens. Life happened. His girlfriend at the time, who ends up being his wife later, she ended up pregnant. And he was forced to drop out of college. Matter of fact, one of Armadaris' classmates, uh, high school classmates, uh, was teasing him, told him he wouldn't amount to anything. He picked up work uh, as a, in swimming pool construction, probably spraying gunite or setting forms or things like that. Uh, he was earning $8.50 an hour. And after a year, his pay increased to $17.50. Sounds pretty good. Probably a little bit different than our wage system here in California. Um, uh, you know, in Texas, probably $8.50 goes a l- uh, longer way. But he ended up at $17.50 per hour. But the company was having some financial difficult and his pay ended up going down to $12 per hour. Richard's mom recommended that he reconnect with his father. And this is where the father comes into the picture. And he said he was pretty nervous, but he had the opportunity to uh, introduce his son to his grandfather. And that started, uh, it kind of broke the ice for, for that meeting. Well, during that meeting, his father suggested that he look into a plumbing apprenticeship. So we began that process. He was earning $12 per hour and the same work he was doing in construction and quickly began to work to earn more. And if you're not familiar with how apprenticeship works, uh, you begin at a bottom wage and you it is OJT. So they're paying you to learn your trade formally. So you go to work during the day and you're earning a wage um, and you're part of a union. And then usually a couple of nights a week, you're going to a school. In this case, it'd be plumbing school. And they are teaching him to do a whole bunch of things like to solder, to make glue joints, cut cast iron. Um, And he had to learn all of the construction codes as well. 
So Armadaris moves on towards his uh, master plumber's license. And kind of in the story, I'm going to lay out, at least in Texas, how this process works. So he went on to, um, uh, he went on working on his plumber's license and uh, he earns the same, well, now he earns $68 per hour and he works for a company that's plumbing and drain in San Antonio. So he's like, you know, one of those vans that drives around the street, probably does small jobs jobs, remodel jobs, mostly dealing with clogged drains and things like that. Um, He wanted to go on to earn his tradesman license. That allows him to work in residential buildings as an a journeyman carpet or excuse me, a journeyman plumber. And then uh, if he's a journeyman, he can do both residential and commercial. So you can see where he's moving up. Uh, He's working on his master's license. And in Texas, um, the in Texas is more if you're going to own your own company. So his concentration is to move up the chain. And remember this guy dropped out of high school and did not get his AA degree in college. So I want to talk about what his typical day is uh, before I move on to the rest of this story. Armadeus works Monday through Friday. He says, uh, no two days are exactly the same. Typical day is going to be like, uh, you know, he gets up in the morning, he reports to work, they dispatch the jobs that he's supposed to do that day, and then he's sent out to the house. And here's where I found this story to get kind of interesting. He says here, while technically plumbing skills are a key part of his job, Armadaris says the rest of his time is spent comforting customers. He projects that 60% 60 or 70% of the work he says um, is very important that they have some kind of empathy for their customers because, you know, they're plumbers, right? And if your house is flooded, you, you got to have some kind of customer service skills. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Uh, I'll finish up this story here. He says, uh, the worst part of Armadaris' uh, worst job that Armadaris has ever been involved in uh, is when they had six inch of sewage in an apartment complex. But the most memorable job started with a service request from one of his high school classmates. Maybe you remember that guy at the beginning of the story. The young man had told me that I wasn't going to amount to anything because he was going to college and he had a big vision for what he was going to do with all of his degrees and so on and so forth. And several years later, he called Armadaris out for a service call. Armadaris showed up to a massive property with multiple cars filling a wraparound driveway. And he says, and I quote, I was looking around and I saw a man You've done really well, says Armandaris. And I was think and I was asking him, what do you do? And he said, Well, I'm the groundskeeper here. So today we're going to talk about soft skills. And um, I think an important part of this conversation is about customer service. But just who is your customer? Um, my guest today introduced me to the concept of uh, a different concept of customer service. And we're going to talk about that right after this. Ready for Work is made possible with help from our premier podcast sponsor, Bay Valley Tech Code Academy. Bay Valley Tech offers free and low-cost coding programs for students seeking life-changing careers in software development. Bay Valley Tech focuses on teaching in-demand web development skills. Unlike other coding and technical schools, Bay Valley Tech leverages a unique community-based training strategy. Professional instructors help students in the Central Valley learn how to use online programming languages to accelerate their careers. Locations in Modesto and Stockton and a free code academy as an online program, Bay Valley Tech is a great place to learn how to code, but it is an even more amazing place to build connections necessary to land a paid software internship or web development job. Learn more about this fast-growing code academy at bayballeytech.com. Bay Valley Tech is a sponsor of this program, uh, Ready for Work, uh, and we'll be talking to Phil Land here in the next uh, couple of weeks. They are expanding into the East Bay as well, so check them out at bayvalleytech.com. So uh, joining me right now, good friend of mine, actually, Gary Bodette. Gary, I never never really know 
you you've got a you, you send me a list right <laughs> i've got your bio in front of yeah. me and you know there's a lot of lean trainer director at parker mm-hmm. hannafin mm-hmm. you're a six sigma black belt in in lean uh, man, uh lean yeah. um you're certified agile project manager uh people ask me what is it that gary do does and i tell people all the time gary is a curriculum content creator is that is that pretty accurate that yeah that's part of it yeah um uh, I'm a problem solver, I say. So I, I do business consulting. So I'm out in industry helping them solve problems in real time. And then after I help solve those problems, I, I learn from them. And then I use that to help make curriculum. So this is part of your curriculum. That's the right. continuous improvement yes. process, correct? Yes. Cool. Cool, cool. So what I want to talk to you about t- today is, you know, I got this story, CNBC, the guy's name is uh, uh, Richard Armanderis. Yes. You know, he's a plumber. Um, And the crazy thing about that story, and you know me, I'm in the world of CTE. So I know yep. about apprenticeships and I, you know, I came out of the trade. So I know about what plumbers do and all this stuff. And the one thing that didn't occur to me in the story is how much time Mr. Armanderis spends consoling customers, Mm -hmm, the customer mm -hmm. service part, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a major, what, what people refer to as soft skills. Some people get offended by that now in the CTE (laughs) world. So, uh, some people call them, whatever you want to call them, professional skills, essential um, skills, skills, people skills, Mm -hmm. right? So, you know, that was a combination of a little bit sort of a a retail background, right? Because the guy's driving his, you know, uh, whatever, Roto-Rooter type van around and he's clogged and drained. So there's a little bit of retail there, but, you know, he comes, he went through all the trades and he comes with all these hard skills. So he knows how to do these things, but these soft skills or professional skills Mm -hmm, or people mm -hmm. skills are really important kind of across industry, aren't they? Yeah. Big time. I thought it was interesting too. He said 60 to 70%. And to me, that's business acumen. That's realizing who's paying the bills, right? The customer first. And it goes for external customers or also within a, a organization. That's what I work with a lot of companies where it's one department, say it's the maintenance department, right? Anyone who submits a maintenance work order, that's your customer, right? So so what is that mindset? How do you how do you approach what's good customer service look like? Right. All those things. So so now that right there is a concept. Because I've got a retail background, mm-hmm. right? I, I spent my my time hopping around different places. I worked in a camera store out in Tracy for like a lot of years, right? And so I learned to sell cameras mm-hmm. to people. But the but but the way that I did that was listening to the customer. Mm-hmm. You introduced me to this concept you just spoke of, like mm-hmm. an interorganizational customer service. Because I had never ever considered my boss as my customer. <laughs> that that had never occurred to me. But really, it's it's nearly the same as a retail right. relationship, isn't it? Yeah, it it really is. And um, I kind of really zoned in on it when about four or five years ago, I was working with makerspaces in uh, Inland Empire, and I was looking at entrepreneurship curriculum and comparing that to the type of business curriculum that I train leadership and in large organizations. Like it's it's the same thing, whether you're starting your own business or you're the department lead in, within an organization, all the concepts from being an entrepreneur to being a yeah department lead, they're the same thing, right? You should treat your yeah. anyone who needs a process from you completed or a product from you, right? Whether I'm making a widget and then I'm sending it over to the shipping department, well, that's my customer. And just to be on time, it's the same things just in retail, Right. You have to have good communication skills as a part of it, listening skills so you could empathize and you could listen to see what your customer wants, needs and expects, but also being on time and then delivering a good quality product. Well, let's unpack that for a minute. <laughs> so, so so listening skills, communication skills, those sorts of things in in an inter, you know, organizational kind of realm, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I think you've told me before, that's like one of the biggest challenges that most most companies endure, right? Right. And those are symptoms. So communication skills, because really, if we if we break down communication, what is that? Am I teaching people how to talk? Like we know how to talk. People know how to listen. It's just, do they do it? Are they choosing to do it? Or maybe is the person who's giving them information, is that is that the wrong approach to speak directions to someone all the time, yeah. knowing that we can only remember if we're interested, maybe 20 percent of what they're saying. So a lot of it, when I when I go into organizations, it's a lot of I'm working with leadership. Like, why, why are you using that method? If you need to get something done, why don't you take a picture of what good looks like and have them instead of 
well, instead of blaming them that they're not good at listening to you, I'm like, well, that's a horrible method of trying to get them to do something is to expect them to memorize everything. So we're, we're kind of opening a can of, <laughs> can of worms here, but you know, we're in the world of CTE, mm -hmm. right? Most of the students that we deal with have a tendency be to be demonstration learners. Mm -hmm. But the concept of showing somebody a picture of what, another thing that I mm -hmm. learned from you in, in your uh, Use Soils program, mm -hmm. um, showing somebody a picture of what is good versus, well, you don't, you don't really want to show them what is bad, right? Because- <laughs> Sometimes it helps, you know, but yeah. But you show them a picture as right. opposed to a written document, right. um, which we know in the world that we live in now, I mean, with texting skills and everything's abbreviated and things like that, people don't really read it thoroughly, right? right? So there's kind of a lost part of the communication portion. But if you show them a picture and you say, this is what I want you to accomplish, mm -hmm. then it's fairly straightforward for a demonstration learner or somebody who's a visual learner, correct? Right. Yeah. And CT, instead of right lecturing, like traditional teaching, um, I'd say I don't think you should lecture anything at all. I'm more about giving them the information and then coaching them along the way, helping them be successful. So you should be an expert usually in whatever you're teaching them and then putting them in that environment. So with communication, so it's cool when you came into Vault, I know that I don't like the picture on the website where I'm sitting there, uh -huh. but it actually brings up a good point. So if I'm to teach someone about, um, right, speaking skills, I'm like, I, I do that in two, like two bullet points, right? One is that you prepare. So when you talk about communication, it's about being prepared before you talk, then you won't be as nervous. The second one is whenever you have negative thoughts, change the channel, like think of something else. So if, if you start saying in your head, well, what if I make a mistake? What if I stop it right there and just think of something else? So Because I, I do that all the time. Right when you say what if, just okay. stop it. Think of something, do something else. Think, of, think about anything. If you prepared, you're good. So when, I, when you took that picture, <clears throat> I was talking to one of the students. He's like, I'm horrible. He's like, I don't get jobs. I'm so afraid of public speaking. I do bad in interviews. So I sit like that on, I sit down and I talk to the class like that. And he's like, yeah, I just don't like public speaking. I'm like, you realize there's 10 people here and I'm here now and you're public speaking right now. He's like, oh my gosh, I am. I'm like, yeah, we're just having a conversation, right? If I'm standing above people the whole time and like talking down to them, that's not good phase one to, to get someone comfortable to speak in a, in a group. So I'm doing hands on with communication instead of telling them all the concepts of it. And yeah, that's good for a little bit, but get them relaxed and talking in, a, in an environment, something that they're comfortable with. That's the way to go. Yeah. I, I don't want to run folks off, but okay. folks, folks I, I was going to say, you could go to the website and see the picture, yeah. but, but I took it down. So, oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, so we changed We'll do a better it. one. Thank you for taking but, it down. <laughs> but the reality is you, you brought your communication down physically down to their level and sat down where all the other students, and that's less intimidating, right? So that's right. body posture, which is another portion of communication, right? right? So, uh, and, and I don't want to steer too far off track mm. here, but all of those things that we just talked about, those are all part of the customer service mm -hmm. sort of sort of package. Those those skills that go along with customer service. We got listening, right? We got mm -hmm. watching for body language because mm -hmm. if he's a plumber, he's gotta he's gotta drop the bad news on him, right? right. Hey, your house is mm -hmm. flooded, and mm -hmm. guess what? It's gonna cost you a thousand dollars, you know. And I won't be able to deal with it for two weeks. You know what I mean? Right. right. So you know you have to listen to the customer, listen to the needs of the customer, and then pr be prepared to address what right. the customer request is, and then give them a reasonable and realistic expectation of mm -hmm. how that's going to be accomplished. And I'm not incorrect. Right. Conflict resolution, things like that help. And yeah. again, the, the number one thing about communication is communication flow. I'll give you examples of yes. retail. Um, say you go up to Starbucks or wherever, a fast food line. And if someone tells you while you're in line, someone comes out like, it's going to be about five minutes. Like, okay. But if you don't, if no one came out and told you it's going to be about five minutes and you're just waiting there after one minute goes by, no communication after two minutes, after three minutes, your car's going to be like, what the heck is going on? You're, you, you'll get angry and mad in like four minutes. Like I'm out here. This is the worst thing ever. Right. The, imagine yeah, the no. difference. So if someone came up and just gave you, right, so that's communication flow, like keep communication flowing between you and your client, you and your customer, you and other departments. Don't keep things up here. 
So, so, so in the case of, and just to paint sort of mm-hmm. a picture here, in the case of Mr. Armadares, mm-hmm. if, if house is flooded, he goes to uh, a, address that job mm-hmm. and he tells the customer, Hey, this is no problem. I'll have it fixed in a couple hours, you know, that right. kind of thing. And that doesn't work out. His expectation is doesn't work out mm-hmm. or he says nothing at all, which is right. the example you said, right. then the customer begins to come in, uh, become impatient, right? right? Then you start to lose confidence mm-hmm. in that, in, yeah. in an inter-organizational, it's an employee, right? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, inter-organizational, that could turn into micromanaging, which makes your job really tough. But in a, in a plumbing situation, you know, he's mm-hmm. on the job. If he doesn't lay out clearly realistic expectations right. that the whole thing could fall apart. Right. And then the customer, when they're confronted with the bill can feel like I didn't get the service that I need. And I feel like mm-hmm. the bill is too high. So right. there's there, that's the cust- That's the uh, communication yes. flow. Yeah. Big okay. time. It's all about communication flow. So mm-hmm. Gary, let me ask you then what is, you know, let, let's, let's, let's try to break it down into age groups here. So what are some ways that, uh, instructors, teachers, um, high school to middle school, high school will go on to college, right. Uh, or higher education, I should say, what are some ways that, uh, instructors can introduce students to a solid foundation in, in communication skills, customer service? Um, so I, I think probably the most beneficial class that I take those so things in debate, Right. So thinking skills first, um, but just logic, problem solving. I know I'll, I'll get to it. It seems like I'm in a roundabout way. But once you're you're able to analyze and critically think about things and and get the skills of seeing where flow breaks down, whether it's process flow, communication flow. Um, I think those are very important to start with. But um, I think certain skills are definitely um, how to articulate and be concise so from writing a good paper, that way you could um, really communicate what you're what you're thinking, because I see it a lot in industry like, oh, my my boss never listens to me. I told him about a problem. I'm like, no, that was a complaint. I'll teach you how to go from a complaint to a problem. You need to articulate in a way. And if you want the higher up you go in a company, if you want to get their attention, you need to talk about dollars like, oh, I have a ten thousand dollar problem that I want to talk to you about versus, oh, you know, that thing's always in my way. It's annoying. Like now you're just complaining. So ten thousand uh, dollar problem. Yeah, is likely like okay, to get their get, attention. Right. Yeah. So so it's about knowing your audience, right? So things like that. Whether it's knowing your customer, but thinking externally, who is the audience? Who am I going to be talking to? Because it helps, right? I dress. I don't wear a tuxedo when I'm training maintenance mechanics. I dress as much like them as I can, so they could relate to me. Right. In, in different settings, I dress different ways, so that way I seem more approachable and relatable. So I think really understanding your audience is great. And then how to articulate what you're thinking, just working on those skills. And then the public speaking, those things will come. But teaching preparation, how how to practice continuous improvement, um, right? When, when you fail with something, how to keep going and keep trying and uh, being open, open to feedback. Um, yeah. So I think you could start that as young as possible. So. Uh, I I heard you say practice Mm -hmm. and really for any skill, whether it's a soft skill or a hard skill, whatever, um, that's really the key to all of that. These things have to be practiced. It's very rare for these things to come naturally to folks, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So even I know with COVID and the e-learning modules and things like that. So everyone has to be creative, right? I I teach for, well, now it's UMass. It was Brandon Brandon University. Um, I'll teach classes there where we had it. We did like the hybrid learning, um, but it's just trying to find the best way you could still get people to work on projects together and practice communication flow where put them right. And I know a lot of um, educational institutes do this now, and it's great because I see it in the real world and the industry is yeah putting them in small groups and have them figure out how to get projects done together. So that's kind of the practice of communication. Put them in, have them, have them uh, get small groups and give them a problem to solve together. That's a good way to do it. All right, well, we need to take a quick break. Um, also, at the bottom of your um, your bio that you gave here, um, you have a new asterisk here, a new bullet point, and it says <laughs> author. And I'm uh-huh. excited about that because you have a new book and I want to talk about that in the next break. So, uh, so stick around for me. You guys stick around. We'll be right back. <laughs>
StanCareerPath.com is a new website from the Stanislaus County Office of Education designed to help students and parents, adult learners, and local businesses connect with career and technical education programs throughout the county. High school students and parents can use StanCareerPath.com to help with career pathway decisions in scheduling high school classes. Adult learners can use StanCareerPath.com to discover training programs available in Stanislaus County. Businesses can use StanCareerPath.com to connect with local high school programs and build partnerships in a variety of ways with educational agencies. StanCareerPath.com also allows for collaboration between educators in the same career fields. With resources like Join the Workforce, you can discover businesses in Stanislaus County that offer career opportunities for students and adults in 15 specific industry sectors. StanCareerPath.com is an excellent tool to collaborate as a county and work towards preparing our students for their careers. Check it out at StanCareerPath.com. I'm having the worst day ever. Everything is getting on my nerves. My teacher asked students to rhyme, and I can't think of any words. It's absurd. I can't rhyme nouns or verbs or compound words. It's like my mind is blurred. I hope she will skip my turn. The other kids rhyme bat with cat, pug with hug, and nerds with birds. And, okay, Hank, it's your turn to think of a rhyme and show us what you've learned. Gee, I don't know, Mrs. Deflame. There might be something wrong with my brain. I can't think of any two words that sound the same. The other kids laugh, and one even starts to dance. They think I am lame. Mrs. Duflame, may I please have a second chance? This is even more embarrassing than the time I peed my, yes, Hank, that's fine. Tomorrow you could try to rhyme at the exact time of 9.59. Well, that was a clip from uh, Gary Bodette's, uh, my guest today, Gary Bodette, uh, his new book, uh, Hank Grime, The Kid Who Could Not, uh, Who Couldn't <laughs> Rhyme. Um, it, what... What's the deal with the book, Gary? You're you're a trainer, a Six Sigma lean process um, trainer for um, the manufacturing industry, but you wrote a book about a kid that can't rhyme. This is a book about self confidence, isn't it? It it has definitely about self confidence, and um, I think really I I looked at kind of going back to the the customer first, and um, yeah, knowing what people like, um, just for me, I probably didn't, I don't know if I've told you this or really told anyone this, that I probably didn't read a, a full book until, uh, I don't know, maybe five years ago. I, really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I would, I jump around so much. I find the spots that I need, but even, uh, I think hunger games like five years ago, I know it's out of all the books, but I, I read most of it, but I always have to like hop around or, or do different things. So I, I read a lot, but never, I can't sit front to back, you know, cover to cover. So, um, just with my spending time with my daughter, she's eight years old now she's nine. But during the time I wrote this, I'm like, man, I just didn't have the attention span to sit through certain books or to even read books. So I made, this book is a lot of fill in the blanks. It's interactive. It's fun. Um, they get to compete with the kid as he's rhyming. Um, so it's just a fun experience. So I wanted to create an experience cause I'm tired after working. And I'm just like, Oh, I have to think of get all this energy to get my daughter excited about reading. So I have to be creative and on the spot because the books just don't do it. It's, they're very bland. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to make my own that way. I'm going to spend a lot of time now to do it. That when I get home, I have something interactive. So it does the thinking for me. I just have them fill in the blanks. They'll get some laughs out of it. But yeah, definitely the, the problem that I'm trying to solve is, or, or the story is about him really having to stand up in front of the class and and rhyme when it shows that he's capable of doing it, but he kind of just he made a mistake. He couldn't do it. Yeah, well, he has people along the way that encourage right. him and try to give him tips and tricks on how to do that. And uh, I don't want to spoil it <laughs> for the kids, but you know, in the end, he realizes it's it's all kind of internal, isn't it? Yeah, and yeah. It just sometimes it takes someone else to to show, like you know, you are good. You you do have talent. Like, just give it a try. And he was just coached by by people, and he found a, a real friend who believed in him. And then he tried it, and he had a great teacher. The teacher's part of the success story, yeah. too, and saw something in him. And, um, yeah, it's, just a, it's a cool story. I, I really like it. Uh, Hank Grime, The Kid Who Couldn't Rhyme. Um, it's on. It's by Gary Bodette, my guest. Uh, and it's on Amazon. And, and, and Barnes & Nobles online and Amazon. 
Mm-hmm. Nice. Fantastic. This would be a great uh, classroom book. This would be a great for the, for the proper age group, right? You don't want to read this to high school kids, or maybe yeah. you do because this is, this is that uh, foundation for public speaking, right? right? So one of my good friends, uh, Ronaldo Rucker, I gave him a book and he said one of his, he, uh, this was over the summer program. Cause it just came out. This just came out in June. Um, he said, Hey, one of my high school students like can't put this down. Like I gave her a copy <laughs> of it because I don't know, because they're doing creative writing and I used to write music a lot. So um, I'm like, maybe it is. I don't, I don't know. It, it does have some, some tricky rhyme patterns on there. Um, so it is, it's just a, a fun read. So I don't know. You're never too young or too old to read. So it's for uh, anyone who, who enjoys it. But it, it's a good experience. I, I like to say the book is uh, for dual experience. It's to read to someone else. Um, that's, I think it's the best way. Illustrations are fantastic as well. Um, this is, uh, yeah, this is, uh, kind of, I, I think that this is going to be the classroom classic. So <laughs> you can get it on Amazon. Can they get it on your website? Um, no, I, I'll link it up there. Link it yep, up on your yep. website. Well, we're going to put a link to, for the Amazon oh, and, and, uh, where folks can get it. And also a link to you personally and your, um, uh, Gary, Gary Bodek consulting, yes, right? Bodek yes. consulting. Yep. Uh, we'll put a link on, uh, in the description of the podcast so folks can reach out to you. Um, and you teach, uh, these skills, mm-hmm. lean processes, agile project management, mm-hmm. you teach those at a higher education level as well. So I just wanted to make sure that I mm-hmm. mentioned, you know, if anybody's interested in learning more about Gary and what Bodette Consulting does, mm-hmm. uh, reach out because um, I work with you pretty closely uh, here at Volt Institute mm-hmm. um, with curriculum that you have created for us that is specific to our program. So um, it's very versatile and uh, I have taken courses from you and I have found those to be invaluable. Well, cool. thank you very much, Kevin. All right, Gary. Well, I appreciate you joining me today. Thank you so much. Right. You guys stick around. Uh, we're coming up on the D block and that's where I'm going to tell you everything that's going on. So we'll be right back. This is ready for work. Volta Institute in downtown Modesto is currently accepting applications for our next group of students for maintenance mechanics with hands-on training. Jobs in the industrial maintenance field are expected to increase by 15% in Stanislaus County by 2024. Careers in this field are high-paying, in-demand, and have career growth potential. Volt Institute is a nonprofit training center ran in partnership with Stanislaus County Office of Education and Opportunity Stanislaus. If you're looking for a better career, Volt can help. Get more information or enroll now at voltinstitute.com. All right. Welcome back to the program. This is Ready for Work, the podcast for career and technical education professionals. Uh, This is the D Block. The D Block is the last segment um, of this program. There are four segments in this program, A, B, C, and D. Thus, we call this one the D Block. This is where I'm going to give you well, not all of it. It's, it's impossible to give you all of the information because there's an awful lot going on uh, in our region, in the five counties that uh, we cover here on uh, Ready for Work. Um, so let's let's just start uh, here with adult education training. And uh, the theme for our, our, our program, our, our episode here, has been apprenticeships and apprenticeship models with the story that we covered in the A block. So let's start here in San Joaquin County where, where there is a solar boot camp coming up. And you can learn about solar power in this free two week boot camp uh, as part of SCO's construction technology training program. That's Stanislaus County Office of Education. You're going to learn about systems and panels and wiring and installation and removal. And this training can help you discover a new career in the booming solar energy industry. Um, Stanislaus County Office of Education is in partnership with Northern California Construction Training Incorporated, that's NCCT, and they offer a building trades pre-apprenticeship program that helps uh, prepare individuals for uh, entry into various construction trades uh, apprenticeship programs. I I work pretty closely with those guys here uh, in Stanislaus County. They provide the tools uh, as well as remedial education in that program uh, and resources to receive your high school diploma if you don't have one. The primary goal is placement in a construction apprentice training program 
of your choice. So electricians, carpenters union, masons, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's a really great program. The construction technology training program offers a job preparation. Uh, excuse me, is a job preparation uh, program offered to adults 18 and over. Also in Stanislaus County, I'll, uh, I'll put this up on the website. Here is the flyer for that, and that'll be up on the website, readyforworkpodcast.com. Um, there is another partnership I want to tell you about. This is Workforce Ready Academy. This is a partnership between the Volt Institute here in downtown Modesto and AgSafe, which is well known. That's an organization that's well known for supporting the agricultural industry. And there are three boot camps within the Workforce Ready Academy tractor operation training, and that's starting in October, October 26th through the 28th. Uh, produce safety rules certification that's going on in November 8th and 9th and then forklift operator training which is an incredibly valuable training that you can get forklift operators here in Stanislaus County make anywhere from $13 an hour to $22 an hour uh, and more a very valuable training you can get um, so just go to readyforworkpodcast.com on the D block page, and you're going to find information about those folks. Uh, don't forget our program sponsor, Bay Valley Tech Code Academy. Um, we're super stoked to have them as a sponsor of this program. Um, and Bay Valley Tech offers free and low cost coding programs for students uh, focused on web-based development languages ranging from HTML, HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, Bootstrap, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, definitely check them out. Their Modesto-based school strives to help students uh, acquire um, and, um, uh, excuse me, acquire adequate knowledge and skills to enter the tech industry hassle-free and land a rewarding career in the industry, uh, in an ever-growing industry and in, with uh, ever-growing demand as well. So let's talk uh, just a second about what if you don't have a high school diploma, well, we got you covered there because in Stanislaus County, there is the Comeback Kids program, and that is a, a, a program that offers high, excuse me, that is a program, offers high school program, I'll start over, Comeback Kids offers high school programs for adults ages 18 and above uh, who want to come back and complete their education. So uh, if you want to attend college or a technical school or enter the workforce, but if you have found that uh, the lack of a high school diploma has stopped you, come back, come back and uh, continue earning your high school diploma. Uh, they offer rigorous high school academic programs that is flexible, customized, focused on areas of need for you individually uh, to help you uh, successfully earn your high school, um, high school diploma. Uh, they follow a community college model and students are enrolled in courses according to identified individual areas of need. Choice courses are available online and all courses offer support classes with small groups or one-on-one -on -one with the teacher. Now, if you're in Stanislaus, excuse me, if you're in San Joaquin County, which is a very large county, covers a large area. They also have a Comeback Kids program, and it's absolutely free, mostly online educational program that's offered through uh, the Stanislaus County Office of Education's um, Operated Schools and Programs Division and can help anyone 18 years or older earn their high school diploma. CBK there in, in San Joaquin County is an independent study program, and it allows individuals the opportunity to complete the necessary coursework to obtain your high school diploma through flexible and individualized schedule. This program will help adults who wanted to uh, advance their career uh, or education, but have found that not having a high school diploma has held them back. And let me tell you, it will. Let me tell you from experience. It will. So you, if you don't have your high school diploma, connect with the Stanislaus County Office of Education or the San Joaquin County Office of Education and uh, go on back. Now, in San Joaquin County, they have uh, locations in Lodi, Stockton, Lathrop, and Tracy. And in Stanislaus County, they're all throughout the county as well. Turlock, Ceres, I believe, uh, Modesto, um, and uh, some other places too. So, uh, we're continuing on in San Joaquin County because I want to tell you about uh, a program for young people. Um, this is San Joaquin 
Building Futures Academy. And this is kind of a cool program. So the San Joaquin Building Futures Academy is a public school for students in San Joaquin County who participate in the San Joaquin County Office of Education Youth Build Program. The San Joaquin Building Futures Academy is a high school dropout credit recovery program that offers grades 9 through 12, so freshmen to seniors, and services adults ages 18 to 24, all right? So if you dropped out to high, out of high school and you're between the ages of 18 to 24, you can come on back through the San Joaquin Building Futures Academy, um, and you're going to get academic and construction curriculum as integrated um, uh, and provides multiple opportunities for hands-on experiences. The San Joaquin Build, excuse me, the San Joaquin Building Futures Academy utilizes non-traditional approach to education and uh, focuses on five key elements. And here they are, completing your high school diploma, certification in a construction-related industry, leadership development and community service, ongoing case management, and post-program placement and post-secondary ed- in post-secondary education, employment, military, and or apprenticeship. Um, so uh, they're big on apprenticeships over there in uh, San Joaquin County. They, they have a whole host of uh, apprenticeships. As a matter of fact, they are the, over in San Joaquin County, they are the local agency, uh, local education agency or LEA for approximately 35 apprenticeship programs across California. And their program managers and consultants over there oversee, uh, review and approve related supp- related and supplemental instruction for apprenticeship programs. And they work with agencies in the area and local apprenticeship coordinator association, management and employee associations on their LEPs, uh, excuse me, their LEAs in support of California uh, California employers to develop skills, to develop a skilled workforce, <laughs> creating valuable, a viable career pathways that increase productivity and strengthen our economy. And that's a, that's, that's a mouthful, but it's an awfully good program over there. So again, all of these are going to be on our website at readyforworkpodcast.com. But let's go up the hill to Calaveras County and we'll visit Columbia College because they have some apprenticeships and pre-apprenticeship programs that I need to tell you about as well. And uh, Columbia College Apprenticeship Initiative is a grant-funded program that supports and supports the development and implementation of new and innovative apprenticeships and pre-apprenticeship models. And these programs support the local workforce and provide educational opportunities for current and future Columbia College students. One of the most popular and coolest programs up there in uh, Columbia College is the Fire Science Pre-Apprenticeship Program. So if you're interested in a career um, in firefighting, and Lord knows we need it here in California, right? Um, The Fire Science Pre-Apprenticeship is designed to, excuse me, Yes, Fire Science Pre-Apprenticeship is designed to provide uh, an introduction to careers in fire science through hands-on experience, workshops, field trips, and more. Uh, After completing the Pre-Apprenticeship and Columbia College Fire Academy, either simultaneously or consecutively, participants will have the opportunity to apply apply to CalJAC, and that's the state's only registered apprenticeship in firefighting. The fire uh, science pre-apprenticeship program is open to everyone, get this, everyone ages 14 and up. So definitely uh, check that out. And again, that's on our website on the D block page at uh, readyforworkpodcast.com. So some other programs that they have up there in Calaveras County, uh, apprenticeship programs they have up there, child development. And that's a two-year program that uh, results in an associate teacher permit and a certificate of completion as registered apprentice through the Division of Apprenticeship Standards. Apprentices uh, work as aides, assistants, and associate teachers in infant, toddler, and uh, preschool classrooms or elementary school after elementary school after school programs. And um, uh, they are uh, strongly encouraged to pursue additional uh, coursework uh, towards uh, an associate associate of science degree in early childhood education. 
Um, they also have a very popular uh, forestry and natural resources program up there in Calaveras County at Columbia College. Um, that's a two-year program that results in a cert, uh, certificate of achievement in the management and uh, restoration of fire, um, fire-adapted ecosystems, as well as a certificate of completion as a registered apprentice through the Division of Apprenticeship Standards. Um, apprentices work in as forest conservation technicians and are given the opportunity to take additional casework towards certificates of achievement and or associate of science degrees. Now, they also have a, a very cool program because, uh, you know, up there in Calaveras County, that's kind of kind of foothill wine country. They got a lot of ho hotels. There's a lot of sites to see. They also they also have a, a hospitality management uh, apprenticeship program up there. I, I'm I'm sad to tell you, sad and happy at the same time, uh, to tell you that currently that program is full, but they are still accepting applications. So if you're interested in getting into the hospitality industry, this is a great way to do that with hands-on learning. Um, and again, that's going to be on our website at readyforworkpodcast.com on the D block. And let's continue up the hill into Wallamy County. Um, and they have partnered with the Greater Valley Conservation Corps, and they help youth 18 to 25 years old with academic and con academic instruction, employment opportunities, and green job training, life skills, and much more. Um, they are currently uh, working with um, uh, 18 to 25 year olds in the fields of recycling and natural resources. So connect with uh, Tuolumne County. Um, superintendent of schools up there. And again, that will be on our website, readyforworkpodcast.com. And let's head down south to Merced County. Um, and they're doing some great work down there. We're going to have them on the program to talk about some work that they are doing uh, in CTE with their high schools, um, which is an incredibly um, innovative program. Um, and, and you're going to be excited to learn how they did that as well how they've done some things uh, that they're doing down there. But let's talk about uh, their regional uh, occupation programs. That's ROP for adults. Um, and their goals are to develop technical and interpersonal skills, secure employment, upgrade skills, and pursue college-related courses. And out in Merced, they have accounting available. They have computerized office technology. They have construction technology, culinary essentials, Foundations in early education, they have medical assisting and medical office administration as well. Now, if we go to Atwater down in Merced County, they have automotive technology, uh, logistics and warehousing. Um, and if we go all the way down to Los Banos, they have computerized office technology and medical office administration available. So again, all of these are on our website, uh, listed as links on the D block page for, uh, at readyforworkpodcast.com. And we're adding more all the time. Again, I wish I had more time in, uh, all of this episode. I figured I'd take up about half of your lunch hour here with all of this information, but you can always go back to our, our website, readyforworkpodcast.com. So in closing, I hope you enjoyed this program and I hope that you will join us again next time. Um, but that's all that we have time for today. So don't forget to subscribe, like, love, um, and more importantly, share this content with uh, other folks that you know who may need it and, and turn them on to this podcast, the Ready for Work podcast. A big thank you to our premier podcast sponsor, Bay Valley, Te Bay Valley Tech Code Academy. I'm pretty sure on our next episode, we're going to have Phil Lan uh, from Bay Valley Tech uh, come in and uh, talk to us a little bit about future casting. I'm excited about that. Phil is a cool, cool guy, and he's got a big vision for the future. So subscribe. You're not going to want to miss that. So, so, so subscribe to this podcast wherever you listen or watch. Uh, Apple, Google, Spotify, uh, Spreaker. Um, if you're listening, if you're watching YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, so on and so forth. Um, I'd also like to thank our partners in the region, Stanislaus County, Tuolumne County, Merced County, San Joaquin County, and Merced County. Um, my name is Kevin Vox. This is Ready for Work. Until next time, get to work. Thank you.